Hello Floss Tube. This is Heather, the 20 Minute Stitcher. Today is Sunday, April 23rd, and this is my Floss Tube episode number 39. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day whenever you may be watching this video. My bangs are doing a weird part thing. Whatever, we're gonna go with it. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to be part of my Floss Tube family for this day. And if you are a returning viewer, mwah, love you all. So happy you come back and spend more time with me time and again. Time is valuable, time is precious, we never seem to have enough of it, and so the fact that you continue to choose to spend some of your time with me, whether you're stitching, having a snack, just hanging out and watching some floss tube, um, I really appreciate the time you choose to spend with me each time I upload a video. So it's been two weeks since my last video, not a whole lot to report. We uh, Work is super busy as always, I'm actually getting ready to uh, travel to attend the annual conference for my professional association. Uh, so there probably won't be a whole lot of stitching done um, in this next week. And then we have a big work event the week after that. So my next video might be really light. Um, this video is a little light, but primarily because I've been focusing most of my energies on just one project uh, until yesterday when I went a little crazy and started a couple of new projects. So other than that, um, Work has been good, life has been good, it's softball season, it's been hit or miss <laughs> on whether we've been getting games or the weather in Northeast Ohio uh, in April is always a gamble. <laughs> uh, so we've had some games, we've been rained out of other games. Uh, on this past Friday, we started a game. <laughs> the team looked great, Mia actually got to start. She doesn't often get to start. Um, and it got rained out in the second inning, so. Anyway, um, other than that, not much to report. Uh, this will probably be a fairly short video just because I don't have a lot of projects. As I said I've been focusing my energies on just one. Uh, but my last video I uploaded uh, right before Easter. So I do have a new Easter start. I have two new starts that I started yesterday. Uh, and actually I started one this morning. And, um, and then a couple of whips, uh, works in progress to share. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I think today is probably gonna be, as I said, a bit of a shorter video. Uh, so my first new start is Chubby Bunny by Jeanette Douglas Designs. This was my Easter start. Um, and I am stitching this as part of the Best Bunnies Sal that Katie the Novel Stitcher started. Um, if you haven't watched her most recent video, she showed her fully finished um, berry patch, which was what she was stitching for the Sal. Um, so I stitched on this for just a couple of days and this is where I got to. It stitches very quickly. I am using most of the called four colors, I believe, though I am uh, stitching from stash for a lot of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I decided to, oh no, I am stitching actually with all of the called four colors, except for uh, the black, which really I think is only his eyes. It's literally, I think, three or four stitches. It's three stitches. Um, it just calls for DMC 310, but everything else is a fancy floss. So I decided to use Gentle Arts Carriage Black instead. Obviously I haven't stitched them yet, but this is where I got to with Chubby Bunny. He's so super cute. Um, so I stitched on this on Easter and then one or two days after Easter. Uh, and that's the point I got to. So that is Chubby Bunny. My other new starts, the one I started this morning, is from Bad Stitch. I'll put a picture of the pattern up here. So if you are on Instagram at all, you probably saw the new Stitcher Collective that's been created. Um, this one, their first sort of collective project was in support of Earth Day. Uh, and I really like sort of how they're approaching things. So 25 designers designed a pattern around the Earth Day theme. And if you made a donation to one of three organizations that they chose, nonprofit organizations that are in support of the environment, if you made a donation of $10 or more to one or more of those organizations, uh, you got access to all 25 of the patterns. Uh, so I did make a donation to Conservation International uh, to, to get access to the patterns. 
And I downloaded, I want to say maybe seven or eight of the patterns uh, and started the first one this morning. So this one was Bad Stitch and it's a sea otter and sea otters are my mom's favorite animals. I haven't decided if I'm stitching this for her yet. Sorry, mom. I know you watch my channel um, or if I'm stitching it for myself or if I'm going to stitch it twice, but it's super cute and I am started it this morning. So I haven't gotten very far, um, but I have the green on the globe and I've started the outline of the otter's uh, head and hand. I am stitching this with all of the called for DMC except for DMC 3860, which is actually um, the substitution color is the brown that's there right now. So I didn't have 3860, so I subbed it with 3862, just another kind of darker brown. Um, and that's actually the brown that you see in there right now. Otherwise, I will be using all of the called for DMC on that pattern. My other new start actually is a me charted design um, and there's a little bit of a backstory to it. So I mentioned I'm going to my professional associations conference this week. Nothing like leaving things to the last minute, right? Um, and this year I served on the nominating committee for my professional association. And so our responsibility is soliciting nominations for and then slating um, the candidates for all of our executive officer positions um, in the organization. So president-elect, vice presidents, um, and board board members, directors. And um, it's I'm fortunate to be part of a professional association with a huge depth of experience and leadership. And so it's actually quite a difficult task. There were, I don't even know how many, um, lots and lots of applications for very few positions. And one of the things we kept saying through the through the the two day slating meeting was just trust the process, trust the process. And in course of just conversation at dinner and things like that, it came out that I cross stitched that I have this floss tube, uh, and someone I think jokingly the chair of our committee I think I think like I said I think she was joking I don't think she thought I'd actually do it. She said you should stitch something that says trust the process and we can put it in a frame and we can just hand it down to each nominating committee every year. You see where I'm going with this, right? So I charted, trust the process, um, and started it last night because, again, nothing like leaving it to the last minute. Um, and this is where I am so far with this. So I have the, uh, the word trust charted and the, and I've started the word process. And then over here, I'm going to put our organization's logo. Um, so nothing fancy, just words, um, but I leave for the conference on Tuesday, and it is Sunday afternoon right now while I'm filming this, so um, I got to get on this and get it finished and get it framed. <laughs> Love that I left it to the last minute. So those are my new starts, and holy smokes, I'm eight minutes in. This is going to be a seriously short video. <laughs> That's okay, right? There's plenty of other long videos out there to watch. I'm pocket sized for your convenience. And if you know where that's from, you can put it in the comments. Um, so then on to my whips. I really only worked, I shouldn't say really, I only worked on two whips these last two weeks. Um, and well, let me start with this one first. So the one that I spent less time on is my um, circle of stitchers, which is my stitch con small. And if I have a picture of where I was, I've not been good about taking pictures lately, so I don't know that I do. But if I have a picture of where I was last time, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, my guess is nothing's going up on the screen right now, but we'll see. Um, but this is where I am now with this. So I believe the last time I shared this, I had um, you know a circle of, and I had part of the word stitchers done. Um, or maybe all of it, I don't remember, but I finished the border, I've started in on the alphabet, I added a little bit more to the border here. I'm pretty sure I finished the word stitchers, but I'm not sure. Um, I gotta get banging on this one too, because um, StitchCon is only like six or seven weeks away at this point, and I not only need to finish stitching it, but I need to fully finish it. So um, that is a circle of stitchers. All right, and I am just stitching this on a piece of random linen that I had in my stash, and I am stitching it with Classic Color Works uh, Ribbon Red. 
and it will say, sorry, the pattern was a free one. I know I've sort of shown it from, from a distance in an earlier video, uh, but it says a circle of stitchers, and then it has the an alphabet, and at the bottom it says a circle of friends. And then it says, the original pattern said StitchCon 2022 down the side. Um, I'm gonna rechart it to say StitchCon 23. All right, my final work in progress that I worked on these last two weeks was my WIPGO call. So if you'll recall from my earlier video, uh, the two calls for me for April were Hive Rules by Primrose Cottage Stitches, and my goal was to stitch on this for 10 days. Um, and then my other one was, now I don't remember which one it was, Firework Kisses maybe, or Ohio. It was one of the patterns that I'd already finished. Um, so this was really my only whip go call for the month, which is good. This is the pattern, the model stitch that I am doing for Brandy at the Stitch Me. Um, and I've had it, had it for longer than I wanted to have it, and I'm not where I want to be with it. So I have met my goal on this one. I have stitched my 10 days. Um, oh, and I meant to take it out of the hoop, but that's okay. Um, we'll just adjust a little bit here. And I have had to move the Q-snap, or not the Q-snap, the hoop. Um, so that's progress. <laughs> but I believe the last time I showed it to you, I had... Um, I had the B suite done, I had the jar done, but I did not have the B in the middle or the back stitching at the top. I had the Y stitched, but I discovered when I went to start stitching the E that I had stitched the Y in the wrong color. Y'all, I don't know if this is because this is my first 40 count project or if I am like stitching this when I'm too tired to be stitching on 40 count. I don't know what it is, but I have had to frog more stitch. <laughs> I have had to frog more times on this project then I have had to frog a project in a very long time, and it's really annoying. Um, I just keep making mistakes, and I don't know what my problem is. Um, and because it's a model stitch, like, I didn't want Like Honey, the whole Like Honey, to be in the wrong color, right? So I picked out the Y and, you know, restitched it. So since the last time you saw this, I have added the Like Honey the bee, the flower, obviously this border here. So I finished the whole second motif and I've started the third motif, which says mind your own beeswax. Uh, and I've gotten some pretty good progress on this. I also made a mistake on this bee, but I decided not to frog the whole bee um, because by the time I realized the mistake, that's what would have had to happen. I would have had to frog the whole bee. And I just decided, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. So his head here, the wider part of his head is supposed to be three rows. It's only two, um, but I don't think anyone's going to notice that. Um, so I lined the letter B up the way it's supposed to be, um, and so I'm just using the, the letter B to do everything else to make sure that it's where it's supposed to be. So these little flowers or bubbles or whatever they are here, these first four are not where they're supposed to be, but this one is, and so everything else the rest of the way will be where it's supposed to be. So I just have to be sure I use this one and everything to the right of it to count down below. Um, it'll be fine. I don't know that anyone will really notice, but, um, but yeah, so this is 10 days of stitching. Um, so it's, it's going slower than, um, something with so many letters typically goes for me. And I think it's because it is 40 count. Um, and I do most of my stitching in the afternoon or evenings. Um, and I just find that I'm too tired. Uh, you know, and I might need some better light than I have. I don't know. I'm going to play around with it a little bit. I'm going to focus on trying to stitch on this in the mornings when my eyes are fresher. Um, cause I'm not as young as I used to be. And while my eyesight is good, um, clearly not good enough in the evenings <laughs> to be stitching on this. I mean, I stitch on it. It just goes more slowly than I've noticed. It goes more slowly in the evenings than it does in the mornings, but I'm really happy with how this is looking. I still have a lot to go. Um, and the motifs that are left or the bands that are left are bigger. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're just bigger. They're going to take longer. So I um, am going to continue to really focus on this um, over the next however long it takes. I really want to get this done by the end of May if I can. Um, so yeah, so that is Hive Rules. And that's all the stitching I have for you um, this video. Uh, I do have a couple of books, so if you're interested in sticking around for the book talk, 
Um, I'll talk about those, but uh, otherwise, short and sweet this time, we'll just bang it out, right? Um, I hope that you are doing well. Uh, and if you want to listen to a couple books, um, book talk, stick around. Otherwise, thanks for spending some time with me and have a glorious rest of your day. All right, books. Um, really only two that I've been reading with any regularity right now and that are ones I haven't already talked about. Well, the one I already talked about, but I finished it. Um, so the book that I finished was the audiobook of Immortality, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. And I believe I spoke about it um, in my last video is one I was currently reading and listening to. Uh, this is a book two in a duology. Um, and I liked it. Um, I really, really liked the first book. Um, so Dana Schwartz also does the podcast Noble Blood, which is my favorite podcast. I, it's really the only one I listen to. Like it releases on Tuesday mornings. I listen to it on Tuesday on my drive into work. All the other podcasts I subscribe to, it's sort of like when I feel the mood. Um, and the first book was excellent. I really, really liked it. I would probably read it again. It was that good. This one was also very, very good. Um, so without giving too much away, um, the book focuses on Hazel Sennett. Um, it is um, the reign of Charles III. She's in Edinburgh in the first book. Um, she's Scottish. Uh, the second book is set in London. She's called down to London um, to serve as personal physician to Princess Charlotte. Um, and uh, in the first book, it was more about her trying to become a surgeon. That's her dream. She she loves medicine, loves surgery, wants to be, loves anatomy. The first book was called Anatomy, a Love Story. Um, and it's all about her trying to become a surgeon and in the process kind of uncovering this very kind of crooked doctor um, who it turns out is immortal, um, that he drank this tincture that made him immortal. So the books themselves are kind of an interesting mix of historical fiction with a little bit of fantasies, you know, kind of science fiction-y um, uh, on the side, right? Um, but they're very, very good. She has, a, you know, someone who turns into a love interest for her in the first book, but he dies, or does he? Um, and and sort of that's sort of where the first book lets off. And then in the second book, she is um, working kind of underground as a surgeon in, um, in Edinburgh. Um, her reputation uh, gets makes its way to the court uh, and she is summoned down to serve as personal physician to Princess Charlotte. Um, and in that, she actually then meets a whole group of other people who um, have also taken this tincture. It turns out they're part of this like secret society with the purpose um, to, um, to their imagining of bettering society through their kind of underground influences and machinations. Um, and they are all people that are based on real people in history, Lord Byron, their poets, their scientists, things of that sort. And so the story sort of centers around her helping the princess and, um, being invited to join this group, being invited to become immortal herself, but she declines, but offers to be their surgeon because even though they're immortal, their bodies still wear out and need attention without getting into too much detail. I'm going down a rabbit hole a little bit, but that's, and so, and one of the reasons I'm struggling a little is because the, this, the, the sequel seemed to be very focused in plot for most of the book. And then the last quarter or third of the book, all of a sudden there were like three different plot lines going on, right? Jack, her love interest from the first book, we find out, um, took the tincture, um, which I forgot to mention, she had snuck it to him. Sorry to spoil the first book. She had snuck him a vial in an effort to try and save his life. Um, it worked. He's now immortal. He ends up back in London. They run into each other. So then sort of that line picks up again. And then a line with Princess Charlotte and her lady-in-waiting and a line with King Charles and his madness and the doctor treating him it, it, and a line with the, the, the secret society. Like it kind of just went in a million different directions and the way it, they were all resolved 
I mean, by the end of the book, there was a neat, tidy bow on everything, but it felt a little rushed. It felt a little... I mean, the fact that there's this immortal secret society is fantastical anyway, right? But, like, it felt sort of more fantastical than I was willing... Than, like, my brain was willing to be, like, accepting of, if that makes sense. I don't know. It was still a very good book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. It's something I would definitely recommend if sort of historical fiction with a little twist of fantasy is your thing. Um, the audiobook is beautifully narrated um, and, and read and highly entertaining to listen to. Uh, but I was, as much as I loved the first book, I'm sorry, Molly is outside the door whining that I have my door closed. I doubt you can hear her, but it's very cute because she doesn't really meow. She just has this like little squeak. It's very cute. Um, do not rip up my carpet. Um, but anyway, so that's Immortality, a love story. So like I said, if you like that kind of thing, I think it's definitely worth your time to listen to. I think the first book was tighter and stronger. Um, I think the second book, I don't know that it would have been as enjoyable without those storylines, but I feel like, I don't know. It, they just stretched the imagination a little too much for me. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they involved real people from history. I don't know. Anyway, but it was it was good. I mean, I definitely would still recommend it. Uh, so that is Immortality, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. I will say the cover art on both of these books is so cool. Uh, anyway, the second book that I am currently reading is um, Atomic Habits by... James Clear? Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. I'll put the cover up. I'm sure people have heard of it. It's very popular. I'm actually reading this as part of a book club with my team at work. We're kind of trying to make our team meetings more than just what everyone's working on um, and get some of our own professional development in while we're doing it. So uh, we are reading this book together as a team. I've only read the first part, but it is um, you know, I, I live in the world of training and development. That's what I do for a living. So, you know, I've read lots of books. I've attended lots of seminars and trainings on productivity, building good habits, breaking bad habits, things like that. Um, but I am buying into this book big time. I don't know if it's the way it's structured, the way he tell, you know, explains things in a slightly different way, but it's resonating with me. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Um, like I said, I'm only 50 pages in. So I'll be reading this for a little while still because we're kind of, we've chunked it up a little bit and have kind of each time our we have a team meeting, we're, we're discussing the next little bit. Um, but so far, highly enjoy it. If you are um, someone who enjoys reading those types of books, who like wants to build some better habits, who wants to kind of understand the science of our brains um, and the ways in which sort of a lot of what we've been taught about goal setting is actually not wrong, but doesn't work with the way our brains work. Um, and that was sort of what the first part of the book was about was that, Hey, setting goals is good, but like a goal is only so good as the habits underneath it. And so if you don't have the right habits, a goal is going to be, is going to remain unattainable to you. Uh, and so he actually recommends a backwards approach to what we're often are taught, right? We're often taught set your goal and then work backwards from there. Um, and he actually t is basically espousing like, Hey, you look and see who's, who is doing what I want to be doing, right? Who has, um, who successfully manages their time really well, who has a great exercise regimen, who has lo successfully lost weight or whatever it is you're trying to do. What are their habits? What are the things that they do that are different from what you do and what should you adopt? And so adopt. So it's really, and it's all about um, starting with identity and identifying yourself as something first and then building habits. Sorry, she is still crying out there. And then building habits that then support the identity you want to be. Um, and, and that's only, and only then when you have sort of identified um, set your identity as what you want to be, then do you, then do you set goals basically, if that makes sense. Um, I'll be sharing more about this book as I go through it, I'm sure, but, um, I'm enjoying it a lot. And so if, if something like that is of interest to you, highly recommend it's very easily readable. Um, it's divided into sort of very bite-sized chunks. So you can kind of take in a little bit at a time, um, enjoying it a lot. All right. 
that's what I have for everyone today. Uh, thank you so much again for spending some time with me. I hope that you have a fabulous rest of your day, weekend, um, week when you're watching this. Um, and as I always sign off, hug your loved ones, be kind to yourself, take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.